silent sentinels, sorting waste with quiet care. Wisdom in the bin. Here is how I upgraded my trash can with AI. Now, I would like to begin this video by introducing someone very important to me. This is Binny, and Binny has had the honor of serving as my trash can for the last six or so years. I'm not quite sure where Binny came from, he's kind of just always been around, but we've shared a lot of fond memories in this room, and some even say that we look alike. I fed him paper, wrappers, and plenty of non-recyclable things, and he hasn't complained a single time. Which is great, because if he did, I would throw him in the street. Anyways, while Binny has always been a reliable little fella, in the age of technology, innovation, and still no GTA 6, his skill set kind of just doesn't hold up anymore. Modern trash cans have evolved. They have beautiful aluminum and steel bodies, plenty of space, they have foot pedal powered lids, they have connect to Wi Fi, they can do your taxes, they can fix your broken marriage. Maybe not those last couple of things. With that said, one of the main features that has tempted me to throw some money down and throw Binny into a landfill are motion activated lids. You see, Binny is an open guy, perhaps a little too open, and anytime you go near him, he just kind of reveals all the trash that he has going on in there to the rest of the world. And this is not functionally a problem. It's not like the trash goes anywhere, but it just kind of looks dirty and unsightly. I really like the idea of having a motion activated lid on a trash can since when you're not using it, it's just kind of down and doesn't expose anything. And then when you do need to use it, you just go up to it. You don't really need to think. It just opens up, you throw your stuff in, and you leave, and bam, it closes and it's clean again. However, when I went online to find some trash cans that actually have this feature, I realized that I am not in the financial position to enjoy these luxuries just yet. Thanks, inflation. Thus, I decided to use my mental ill, I mean creativity, to conjure up a solution that would allow me to spare Binny from a larger trash can. After all, I care a lot about the environment, and doing this myself would prevent me from sacrificing Binny to the ocean microplastic gods. You live to see another day, Binny. You live to see another day. Unlike my last few projects where I started out with the design, here, I decided to start with the circuit, just because no matter which design route I went, I think I probably would have ended up using the same parts. Since we're building a motion-activated lid, we're obviously going to need a motor of some sort to actually open the lid. We're going to need a motion sensor, a power supply, and then finally, some way to actually control everything, so a microcontroller. For the motor, I decided to use a servo motor, which is a motor that pushes hard, but not very far. In more technical language, a servo motor is a motor that has higher torque, but less range of motion. And I figured it made the most sense for this use case of opening a lid because the lid is probably going to have some weight to it, and I don't think I need more than 180 degrees of rotation, unless I'm trying to send Binny to another dimension. For the sensor, I decided to go with an ultrasonic sensor, and while this googly-eyed looking thing is not necessarily a motion sensor, it does detect distance, which is good enough for our case. As for the power source, I thought it would be pretty stupid to have a battery-powered trash can, so I went with the next dumbest thing, which is to plug the trash can into the wall. Finally, for the microcontroller, I decided to go with the Arduino Nano, mainly because it's compact and really cheap, just like me, and pretty much everything that we just went over is actually quite inexpensive. You can pick up all the parts we just talked about for $15 or less on Amazon. A few orders later, and I ended up with a couple parts at my doorstep, and now it was time to actually connect everything together. But wait a minute, how do we connect all these parts together in a beautiful and compact system? Well, that's where today's sponsor comes in, PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for anything PCB manufacturing and assembly. They make it super easy for you to get your designed printed circuit boards manufactured and shipped all from the comfort of your own home. For this project, I needed a nice board that would connect our microcontroller to all of our auxiliary, auxiliary, auxiliary parts. Okay, all together in one compact package. It's important that it's compact here because we need to mount all these things onto Binny, and we don't want a giant mess of wires taking over the whole thing. I opened up KiCad, which is an open source tool for circuit board design, and created a really tiny shield that would house my Arduino 
and also had pins to actually connect the other components through jumper wires. I sent this over to PCBWay through their quick and easy online form, and they were able to get these manufactured and shipped to me for a super reasonable price, and within days, they were at my doorstep. This time, I chose the black solder mask, and it looks so premium and so stylish. If I could wear a PCB, I would wear this. If you're interested in using PCBWay for your next project, click the link in the description to learn more. After getting these beautiful boards from PCBWay, I ended up with this nice looking contraption that I certainly could not bring on my airport carry-on. It was then time to give this circuit purpose by writing some code. Now wait, before you fall asleep or start vomiting or both, I'm going to make this really simple and really digestible for you. This is the sensor. And this is a thing. If thing get close to sensor, then the lid go up. If thing go away from sensor, then lid go down. I don't know why I started having an accent towards the end of that. After spending a really long, focused five minutes writing this groundbreaking C++ code, I uploaded it to the microcontroller and tested things out and it was working great. Now it's time for us to move on to the body. I started out by taking Binny's measurements so I knew what we were working with. We're talking vertical opening length, horizontal opening length, border radius, girth, bust. Anyways, once I had those measurements down, I hopped into Fusion 360 and started designing a frame that could mount on the top of the trash can. I didn't want to permanently glue anything onto Binny or drill into him, not because it's wrong, but because that takes a lot of work. I thought it would be nice to have a lid that I could just snugly fit on top of the trash can and also remove at any time to actually empty out the trash, change the plastic bag liner, and so on. I started with a relatively straightforward frame that sits on top of the trash bin and it has a giant hole in it for trash to go through. Because, yeah, that's necessary. Now that I had a base, I started adding the parts that were actually necessary to make this whole thing functional. The main one being the lid itself, which was pretty straightforward. I made a giant thin plate that was just slightly bigger than the trash hole opening that could cover everything. From there, I added the mount for a servo motor and some extrusions to connect the lid to the servo motor, and this would effectively be the hinge of the entire lid. After all that, it was just a matter of adding some mounting points for the electronics so I could mount them using M3 nuts and bolts. And voila, we now had our design. Now, it was time to get this thing off my computer and into the real world using 3D printing. However, there was an immediate problem. These parts are huge and my 3D printer has a mere 200 by 200 millimeter build volume. Thus, I needed to get creative here by watching some dude's YouTube tutorial on how to handle this. Thomas from the Made With Layers YouTube channel has a nice video on some strategies for breaking up large 3D models into smaller 3D prints. And I'll link that video in the description below. One of the options was splitting the body using dovetails that could then be fit together like a jigsaw puzzle and then glued down. And that's the strategy I went with because I think dovetails is a funny word. I took the parts that were too big to print, went into Fusion 360 and split them up using this dovetail strategy and started printing them out individually. After a lot of printing, I ended up with these parts and used my favorite substance in the world to connect them. Sorry, I didn't see you there. I was just inhaling some Gorilla Glue. Don't do this, by the way. I think it could be quite unhealthy. Anyways, as I was gluing the parts together, I noticed that the dovetails I printed probably had too much tolerance and there were giant gaps between the parts to connect. I ended up compensating for this using mounds of Gorilla Glue, but in the future, if I was to do this again, I'd probably reduce the tolerances there for a tighter fit. After the parts dried, it was time to assemble everything. Assembly was mostly straightforward, but I did have some minor issues. While attaching the servo to its mount, I ended up breaking the mount completely because the walls around the bolt mounting holes were way too thin. So I ended up redesigning this part completely and adding more support around those areas and also adding a clamp over the body of the servo, and that seemed to do the trick. Joining the lid to the servo motor was also quite a challenge. I didn't account for the fact that the screws were really long, so they protruded out of the plastic and became quite the safety hazard. But that's fine because an easy solution here is to just not touch the screws. From there, I attached everything to the frame using nuts and bolts, placed the whole configuration on Binny, mounted the ultrasonic sensor using double-sided tape, plugged the thing in, and we were good to go. Now for the moment we've all been waiting for. 
The Rise of Benny. Okay, so everything ended up working, but not without issues. You see, the clips that you just saw are not the first test. I didn't get that on video, so I'll attempt to use my very strong artistic abilities to illustrate what happened. In my code, when the program decides to open the lid, it very stupidly instantly changes the lid position from the closed position to the open position. And this happens very quickly, so quickly that the lid doesn't want to stay on the motor. I'm really mad I didn't catch this on video because it probably would have been very entertaining, but the solution was just to glue down the broken mount to connect the actual hinge back together, and then from there, just changing the program to open and close the lid at a slower speed. After that, things stopped being as catapulty. Another problem with the design in general is that having the servo motor as the sole hinge mechanism isn't very stable, and because of that, the lid frequently comes out of alignment with the frame. If I had more time, I probably would have gone for a more traditional axle hinge design, and then have the servo motor attached to some kind of plastic arm that could raise and close the lid, and that would have solved the alignment problem. All things considered, I think I did an okay job for a quick attempt at extending Binny's lifespan in this age of science, technology, and rapid development. But needless to say, I will probably be saving up for a luxury trash can in the near future. I want to take a quick second to thank the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. Thanks to them, we get these nice PCBs to use for these wacky videos. Very appreciative of them. And as always, if you want to build this project yourself for some reason, the files for the 3D designs as well as the code will be available in the description for free. And also, before I go, you might be wondering with respect to the video title, where is the AI in this project? And the answer is, I lied. Just like corporations are doing to you. Maybe the real AI was the trash we made along the way. Pair out.